What's going on? Sunday, fun day today. Jimmy here in Chicago. Hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're staying safe. I want to do a story today about just like a two, three day itinerary. Things to do and places to go when visiting Chicago. I'm also going to talk about some of the pros of living in a great city like Chicago and some of the cons. Some of the pros going back to the old days. There's opportunity here. There's always jobs. If you can't find a job in Chicago, you can't find a job anywhere. Why do you think we got the most Polish people? Why do you think we got the most Mexicans? They all come here for work, opportunity. We also have probably the greatest skyline in North America, in my opinion. We have some of the best nightlife, some of the most delicious restaurants in the country. Keep in mind, we're in the Midwest. This is like the manufacturing hub. So there's plenty of factory manufacturing plants to work at. We had the old stockyards, the meatpacking plants, finance, right? All your banks. You got the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the Chicago Board of Trade. Those two combined are the largest trading uh, commodity in the world. And if you're a tradesman, there's a lot of work, whether it's union or non-union, construction, restaurants, bars, cafes. So there's a lot of opportunity here. We also got great neighborhoods. There's not a lot of cookie cutter neighborhoods, right? There's a lot of characters, a lot of different ethnic neighborhoods. These are just some of the pros of living in the third largest city in the country. Now, some of the cons, some of the negatives are, number one, it's very corrupt. Back then, our judges, politicians, policemen were all corrupt, vast majority of them. It's getting a little bit better. They also rape you in taxes, property taxes, food, gas, cigarettes. We pay more than anybody else in the country. It's also very dangerous. We got to be in the top uh, three cities in murder rate, right? Street gangs have pretty much taken over. We're losing police officers left and right. The traffic is outrageous. I'll spend every single day, two to three hours a day for traffic. Then they have the gall to rape you on camera light tickets, parking tickets. You better have a permit sticker. They're notorious for uh, booting your car, breaking into your car, having your car stolen. So there's a lot of pros and cons. A lot of people are moving out of the city of Chicago. But let's keep it positive, man. Let's talk about my bucket list. These are some places I highly recommend when you're in the city of Chicago. Breakfast or lunch, you can go to a na uh, one of the best bakeries in my neighborhood, one of the oldest bakeries. Diamato's Bakery, my girl Rose runs this place. One of the hardest working girls in Chicago. Here you can get a nice cappuccino, espresso, homemade baked breads, fresh deli sandwiches, delicious pan pizza, Italian cookies, cannolis, pastries. You can get a nice meatball sandwich, chicken cutlass sandwich, salads, homemade soups. You can sit outside. This place is a gold mine. And then when you're visiting Diamato's Bakery, right next door is a Mon Pa Italian store called Bari Foods. There you can get probably one of the best deli subs in the city, right next to Diamato's, as well as some of the homemade Italian sausage. Now, kitty quarter from the bakery is Joey Lombardo, his old social club. I did stories about it and back in the day. Any day of the week, you could see anywhere from 10 to 30 guys all sitting outside, playing cards, cooking, busting balls, watching the girls go by. Right there on Grand in May, west of downtown Chicago. Highly recommend going to Diamato's, like I said, for breakfast or lunch. In a little history... Right across the street from Diamato's was Rosie's Snack Shop. The building is still standing there today. 
used to be Terry's Co Coffee. And this place was owned by Chicago Outfit heavyweight union guy Jimmy Kozo. And we all know back in the 70s, Dick Kane. He was a Chicago Outfit associate, good friends with Sam Giancana. He was also a government informant, which, as we all know, is a very dangerous lifestyle to live. He was kind of like a double agent. Well, eventually, the Chicago Outfit bosses found out that he was working for the G. Two masked gunmen walked in. They lined everybody up. They announced the stick-up. One of the masked gunmen put the shotgun underneath Dick Kane's chin and blew his head off right there in front of everybody. Broad daylight, leading witnesses. The alleged trigger man was Harry Alleman. Sounds like his M.O., New York style, ski mask, shotgun. The other uh, accomplice shooter was Joe the Clown Lombardo, which was in Joey's neighborhood. Some people think it was Marshall Cafone. But this was a hit right there on Grand Avenue at Rosie's Snack Shop. And you could walk past this place on your way to the bakery. Now, just east of there, again, within walking distance, all these places are close proximity to one another. If you want a delicious Italian dinner, one of the best. And when I say best, I don't mean the most expensive. I mean the most delicious. Right there on Grand Halston in Milwaukee, a major Six four six Street intersection. You got La Scarola. Small restaurant, maybe 10, 12 tables. But this is where a lot of the Chicago outfit guys used to go. A lot of celebrities, professional athletes, politicians, rock stars, you name it. Not very expensive, but delicious. Kind of hard to get in, but if you're patient, it's definitely worth the wait. And then right next door, Richard's Bar. The oldest, it's a classic dive bar in Chicago, open every day of the year, including holidays. It's open early in the morning, closes late at night. You can get a beer here for 2 $3. They've got the best jukebox in the city where you'll hear, you know, Marvin Gaye, Frank Shinatza, Dean Martin, Bob Seeker, Elton John, Billy Joe, all the classics. Years ago, a lot of Chicago Outfit Associates used to hang out here. I would hang out here literally five, six days a week. It was kind of like a social club. But both of these places are still around today. I highly recommend going to La Scarola for one of the best Italian dishes you ever had. And then going to Richard's Bar. It's kind of like a, uh, a step in, uh, like a time machine, like going back in time. This is an old school, um, kind of has that gangster vibe feel to it. Kind of like an old speak easily. But check out Richard's Bar, hands down the best bar in Chicago, and La Scarola. Now, depending on whether you're a White Sox fan or a Cubs fan or a baseball fan, if you do go to White Sox Park, you kind of got to be careful because across the street kind of can be a little bit of a dangerous neighborhood. But uh, this is historical White Sox Park where the White Sox play. They're talking about building a new stadium, but I think they got to get a team first before they think about buying it, building a new stadium. But one thing I will say about White Sox Park, they've got some of the best ballpark food in the country. Next best thing about White Sox Park, it's in a uh, an old Italian mobbed up neighborhood called Bridgeport. So if you do go to a White Sox game, best to take the red line there, to take the train, get off on 35th and walk. And just down the street, you got one of the oldest, largest Italian social clubs in the city. Uh, back in the day, uh, Angelo LaPetria, boss of the 26th Street crew, this was his club. And him and Frankie Schweiss extorted hundreds of thousands of dollars from Chinatown, and they used that money to pay off a lot of their defense attorneys during all the trials. They also used money that they extorted from Chinatown to build the club. Now inside, this is really nice in here. It's marble, nice furniture, card tables. They got a pool table. They got a full-blown kitchen. They've got all the black and white photos. And if you're on your best behavior and you're cool, some of the old timers will let you in to walk around the club. But you got to show respect here. Back in the day, 
Uh, this is where Angela Lapetria, Frankie Schweiss, Nick Calabrese, Frankie Calabrese, Thakarada, Caruso's, Rodies, you name it, the entire 26th Street crew and their associates all hung out here. This place is still standing today. So again, if you're at a White Sox game, you might as well walk around the neighborhood and check out the club. To the right of it, they got it kind of like a mem mem memorabilia wall where they have all the Italians, guys that served in World War I, World War II, or Korea, Vietnam, or legendary families like the Caruso's, the Rodis, the um, La Matias, etc., that all grew up in this little patch. Some of their ancestors came from Italy, but they have like a little um, memorabilia of all the Italians that passed away. They have their name and the day they were born and the day they died etched in stone. But check out the uh, the social club right there, um, not too far from White Sox Park. And then Kitty Corner, you got an active social club. This is just one of several private social clubs where you got some of the Chicago outfit guys and associates that like to hang out here, play cars, bus balls, drink at a Zet, and basically watch the girls go by. Not really a whole lot of action going on these days, but back in the day, this is where some of the uh, heavyweights hung out. And unlike the um, unlike the big club, where some of the guys are friendly, you definitely don't want to be snooping around taking pictures or video. Uh, they'll definitely uh, frown on that. And if you're hungry, I highly recommend going to Rico Benny's right there, right down the street from the club, not too far from White Sox Park. This place has the best breaded steak sandwich. And they have really good pizza as well. This is the original one. All the other franchise won't have clothes. But if you're in the area, whether it's lunch, dinner, or late night, this is a great spot to eat, Rico Benny's. And then right there in the Bridgeport neighborhood, right across the street from Rogers, uh, White Sox Park, you got Armor Park. This is where a lot of Chicago uh, 26th Street guys used to hang out. They used to play baseball, play softball. But this, uh, when I think of Armor Park, this is where Frankie Caruso and a couple of his fr friends brutally beat a black kid, Leonard Clark, and his friend. They put him in a coma. And Frankie Caruso got in a lot of trouble. Here's the son of the boss of the Chicago outfit commits a brutal hate crime. This got national attention. I went to the trial at 26th in California. I did a story about it. Uh, but this was a big deal. But the Caruso's family, Frankie Caruso and his family, they showed great remorse to Leonard Clark, the victim. They helped pay for the hospital bills helped put him in a better home, bought him a car, got him through school. When Frankie uh, Caruso was convicted and went to jail, he did his time like a man when he came out. Him and Leonard Clark, the, him and Leonard Clark, the kid he beat up, actually became friends. But check out the story I did on uh, Frankie Caruso, but it happened right here at Armour Park. And then right there, right across the street from Armour Park, close to Rico Benny's, is you have Andrew Lapetria's Fortress. Now, this picture doesn't do it justice, but this is Andrew Lapetria, Andrew LeBull. He was boss of the notorious 26th Street crew. They were the killing crew of the outfit. This guy was a very evil, sadistic man. Uh, Frank Calabri said he was the only one that ever had the balls to look him in the eye. Angelo gave Frank Calabri $300,000, to put on the uh, streets to get into the juice business. Frankie Calabrese made millions of dollars and became the largest loan shark in Chicago. But this guy here uh, eventually uh, got pinched during the straw man case. He went away to jail along with uh, some guys from Kansas City, Joey Lombardo, Jack Cerrone, and Joey Upa. They were skimming millions of dollars from the mobbed up hotel um, mob hotels and casinos in Vegas. But this is Andrew Lapetria, a very vicious uh, Chicago outfit uh, boss who led with violence and fear. Um, a lot of the maid guys were scared to death of this guy and wouldn't even look him in the eye. They hated being around him. But one interesting story is Nick Calabrese told the story where once a week he would go to Angela Lapetria's compound 
and fill the barbecue mitt with thousands of dollars. So Angela Petria would look out his kitchen window on, on the back deck. If the mitt was facing up, he knew there was no money in it. But if Angela the Bull looked out and saw that the mitt was facing down, he would walk out of his kitchen onto the back porch where the barbecue grill was, and the, the mitt would have thousands of dollars stuffed in it. But I thought that was pretty interesting how that was how Nick Calabrese would make his payments to Angela Lapetria. We'll keep going here. Another place I recommend, highly recommend for dinner, again, you're not going to break the bank just west of downtown Chicago, is Greek Islands. This is my favorite restaurant. It's a staple in Chicago. Uh, authentic Greek restaurant, free valet parking, great place to go before a concert at the United Center, or if you're going to a Bulls or a Blackhawks game, definitely want to go to Greek Islands. But don't go there and get the gyro like my friend. Get a Greek dish. Get the uh, the lamb, the lamb chops, the Greek chicken. The pasticcio, which is like a Greek lasagna, or get the a combination plate. Uh, but this is uh, my favorite place. This is my go-to. Back in the day, as we all know, Frankie Schweiss used to hang out here, as well as some of the other restaurants in Greek Town. There's only like two of them left. And what I learned at the Family Secrets trial is years ago, 70s and 80s, when the restaurants in Greek Town would close right around 11. They would reopen late night into full-blown casinos, making millions of dollars for the Chicago outfit. And Frankie Schweiss, he had pretty much the valet guys, the waiters, the busboys, the cooks, the bartenders, the restaurant managers. He had most of the Greek town employees on his payroll. They were all gambling with Frank Calabrese. But definitely go here for dinner. This is one of the best Greek restaurants you'll ever go to. And if you're into Greek town, right down the street from Athea is Zenleaf. This is probably the best dispensary in the city. Hard to believe that we have dispensaries now. Years ago, they would lock you up for, for smoking weed. Now, every other block, we have a, a dispensary. But here, if you're into vaping, flower or edibles, this is um, Zenleaf right there in Greek town. Now, right next to China, or right next to Bridgeport, you got Chinatown, right? Chicago Outfit made millions of dollars with all the gambling that went on here. And just like Greek Town, when these restaurants would close at 11 o'clock, they would reopen into full blown private gambling joints. I think there's still a little bit of gambling going on here, but I know for sure there's a couple massage parlors going on. I've been to one of them where they had the fucky suckies in there. But Frank Cal or Frankie Schweiss and Angela Lapetria, boss of the 26th Street crew, extorted millions of dollars from Ming Long, which is like the, uh, the committee of Chinatown. And with that money, they used that to pay off all their defense attorneys with all the trials going on. And they used that money to build the club, the Italian American Social Club. But bottom line, just like Greek Town, the Chicago outfit, made millions of dollars of all the gambling going on in Chinatown. I don't really care for Chinese food, but if you like Chinese food and Chinese culture, you definitely want to check out Chinatown right next door to White Sox Park and the old Italian patch in Bridgeport. Speaking of Italian patches, you definitely got to go to Taylor Street. Taylor Street is, is just south of Greektown. And here's a delicious place. you got parking in front, parking in the back. It's huge inside. There's plenty of rooms to sit. You don't have to worry about never not being able to get in. You'll definitely see some of the uh, Taylor Street um, wise guys in here, as well as a lot of the college kids, doctors and nurses from the, uh, from the hospitals nearby. But this is Pompeii, a delicious Italian cafe, Italian restaurant. They have, they serve serve wine, they serve beer, they also serve homemade dessert. But check out Pompeii if you want to have a nice lunch or an inexpensive dinner. And then you walk a couple blocks east. This will be open in May 1st. My favorite place on Taylor. I'm here six, seven days a week. you got Mario's Italian Lemonade Stand. This place is a freaking gold mine. They've got block lines all the way down the street, right across the street from uh, Big Al's Beef. But this is a must 
uh, uh, definitely a, a go-to place you got to check out right in the heart of Little Italy, Mario's uh, Italian Lemonade Stand. And then right across the street and right there you could see you could just sit on the stoop, hang out, and watch the girls go by. Also in the Taylor Street neighborhood, it's a little tricky to find. It's off of Taylor on Mount Vernon. you got Tofano's. This is one of the oldest Italian restaurants in the city. You can see they write everything on the chalkboard. They actually have an old school bar in front. You got a lot of the old Italian uh, widows and women that work there as waitresses. And years ago, Frank, Frank Sinatra, this was his favorite restaurant to go to when in Chicago. And a lot of the uh, all the old uh, Chicago outfit mob guys, guys from Taylor Street, guys from uh, Elmwood Park, they would all come here, wine, dine, and socialize. But check out Tofano's, and you, you can still see a couple of the outfit guys and associates that like to hang out at the bar. And again, it's not very expensive, easy to get into, and I even think they have a... Uh, valet parking. Also in the Taylor Street neighborhood, one of my favorites right across the street from Rosebud uh, on Taylor and Laughlin, which is east or yeah, east of Ashland, you got the patio. This is a family-owned uh, beef joint, one of the best Italian beefs in the city. Not a lot of people know about it. You know, in Chicago, we're spoiled. We got Big Al's, we got Portillo's, we got Biona, we got Johnny's, Frankie's, but trust me, Scatchel's is another good one in Cicero, but this is one of the best uh, this is owned by Johnny the Bug Valari. He was a uh, an old gangster back in the day for the Wild Bunch from the Joster Joster Gang. Um, but patio still open today. Family owned uh, Italian beef fry, Gernara peppers, hot sweet, you name it. And again, ten bucks. Same sandwich at Portillo's is around fifteen dollars. But check out the patio uh, just down the street from Pompeii. If you like Italian beef, one of the best. Also, another thing I recommend in, when you're in Chicago in the summertime is check out some of the street festivals, man. They're a lot of fun. Most of them are for free. The food is delicious. A lot of lot of beautiful women, a lot of good people watching. But my favorite, hands down, is the Taylor Street Fest. It goes from Thursday through Sunday, and I usually go four nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's how much fun it is. Everything is right around $5, so it's affordable. There's entertainment from the for older people, meaning they have like uh, – Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Rack Pack Bands. They also have DJs. They have uh, an old Italian guy that plays in the quarter. A lot of good merch. A lot of uh, people that used to live in the neighborhood come back to the neighborhood for the festival. You'll definitely see some uh, outfit guys here. I've seen Sally De Laurentiis here. I've seen um, uh, Joe Lopez, the mob attorney here. I've seen Alex Salerno here. I've seen Bobby Gabit Bellavia here. Um, I seen uh, Rocky Lamatia, Neff. I mean, I can go on and on, but this is the best uh, festival to go to in the summertime. And I think it's like August and September. You also want to check out the Blues Fest, which is free. The Jazz Fest is free. Um, another one of my favorites is the Randolph Fest. But this is just one of many, many uh, fests in the city of Chicago. And my favorite is the Taylor Street Fest. Now, while you're in the Taylor Street uh, area, one block uh, north on Polk is you'll see some beautiful brownstone buildings like this one. But right here, this is where Chicago outfit uh, hitman Harry Allman used to live. And as we all know, Harry was uh, related to Joe Ferriola. When he got out of prison, Ferriola gave him like $300,000 to get on his feet and put on the street. Harry was a loyal a uh, soldier of the Chicago outfit would have been a made guy, but he wasn't hundred percent Italian and allegedly he killed a lot of people, but uh, in the neighborhood, his family, friends, people that knew Harry all loved him, respected him and feared him. I went to his trial at 26 in California. And it was the first time the government ever threw out the double jeopardy law because years ago, Harry's connection, through the first war, they bribed the judge. They bribed Judge Frank Wilson $10,000. They used the corrupt bag man, lawyer, Bob Cooley. The judge accepted the bribe and years later committed suicide. When the government found out that the first trial was fixed, they threw out the double jeopardy law, first time ever, and tried Harry the second time 
when he killed Bill Logan, a union official. I went to that trial 26 in California. I'll never forget seeing Harry Elliman, uh, how much he's aged, being locked up for many years. And then several years later, I actually went to Harry's uh, wake after the family secrets trial. But this is uh, Harry's home uh, that he used to live in with his family, right there off Taylor and Polk. Now, aside from all these gangsters, if you want some blues, there's no better place to go than Chicago. I would highly recommend. There are several blue places to go. House of Blues, Blues Up North on Halstead. But check out uh, the new, fairly new Buddy Guys. It's a lot bigger than the original. There's live blues band there every night. They've got, I think they serve food. They've got a full bar. And believe it or not, you might even see Buddy Guy hanging out there like I did or performing. I uh, went there on New Year's Eve, and to my surprise, Buddy Guy was there hanging out, and then he performed later. I actually uh, took my picture, bought a baseball hat, and made small talk. First time I ever met a blues legend. But again, this is uh, if you want if you're looking for some live music, check out Buddy Guys right there in the South Loop. Now, if you want to chill and relax, you know we got the beautiful lakefront. Doesn't cost nothing to hang out at the beach. You got Ohio Beach right there. Not too far from um, Navy Pier, one or two blocks east of Lake Michigan, not too far from Lake Point Tower. Lake Point Tower is that one high rise I did where a lot of the uh, uh, rock stars and mob guys and big shots used to live in. But a lot of the Grand Avenue guys, guys like the Kozo family, Joey Lombardo, Joey Andrieca, Spina, on and on, a lot of people from the Grand Avenue neighborhood um, used to hang out and party. Uh, at Smith Park, and it's right next to Olive Park. And what I love about this, not only is it quiet, but you got a beautiful view of the skyline. So many memories here. I should take some of my girlfriends here late at night. But this park is dedicated to a Vietnam combat veteran called Milton Olive. And years ago in Vietnam, um, he actually threw himself on a grenade saving his entire pl platoon. So this young army guy, soldier, risked his life, gave up his life to save the men in his platoon. And you can see the statue and the plaque outside of Olive Park and read the story about that battle, and uh, it'll bring tears to your eyes. But that's dedicated to Milton Olive. They call it Olive Park. But check out Olive Park and check out Ohio Beach. Great place to chill hang out, and maybe watch the sunset uh, of our beautiful skyline. Now, if you got a few bucks, I highly recommend taking the uh, architectural tour. Uh, it's on a boat. It goes up and down the Chicago River, and it goes into a deep history on all the beautiful uh, buildings in Chicago. I think, in my opinion, we have the best skyline in the country. New York may be bigger, but ours is more refined. Ours has more character, but check out the... Uh, uh, the tour that they offer. And then if you like to just chill, sit down, and people watch, you want to go to the Viagra Triangle or what's left of the Viagra Triangle. Now it's all condos and high-rises. But, you know, some of these bars like Tavern and Rush, Carmine's, these are all mobbed-up uh, mobbed up joints. A lot of beautiful women hang out here. You know, they call it Viagra Triangle because you can see all the beautiful uh, hookers and working girls hanging out with all these rich old dudes. But you also see a lot of celebrities, a lot of professional athletes, a lot of high-end cars. Uh, this is where my friends and I used to hang out back in the day, 80s, 90s. So much fun. Every freaking weekend there was a fight. But uh, guys like Butch Petroselli, Tony Borsellino, and a lot of the outfit guys, this was like, like their playground back in the day. But check out uh, the Viagra Triangle. Here's a little outdoor cafe where you could sit down and watch all the girls go by. Now, here's a must to do if you haven't done this already. In my opinion, there's no better place to be in the summertime than Wrigley Field. And like Eddie Vedder says from Pearl Jam, when you first walk into Wrigley Field, it's like Oz. It's like being in the Wizard of Oz. And even if you don't go to the game, just hanging out in the neighborhood is so much fun. There's all kinds of great bars and restaurants, a lot of beautiful women, a couple blocks from the lake. Um, this is the only thing that compares to this is maybe Fenway Park or the old Yankee Stadium. But I, I say this is even more fun, more historical. But whether the Cubs are winning or losing, you definitely want to uh, check out Wrigley Field. 
and one of my favorite bars to go to before the game, right there in the outfield off Sheffield, is Murphy's. And at Murphy's, man, I've seen Eddie Vetti there. I've seen Charles Barkley. I've seen Chris Chelios there. I've seen Cindy Crawford. So a lot of uh, a lot of familiar faces hang out at Murphy's. But all the bars and restaurants are a lot of fun there in Wrigley Field and like White Sox Park. You know, you can easily take the uh, the train, the red line, and it drops you right off in front. There's also a lot of great concerts here as well in the summertime. Now, if you are in uh, Wrigley and you, you don't want to go to a, a sports bar, you want to have more of a like a fine dining experience, right there on Clark Street, they used to have two of them, one here, one on Taylor, but you got Mia Francesca. This is a delicious Italian restaurant. The owners were uh, good friends with Chicago Outfit boss, John Nonos the Franzo. I remember I seen Marco D'Amico in here one time with his beautiful wife. I was a little intimidated to say anything to him, but I, I was probably the only one in the restaurant that recognized him aside from uh, the host. But Mia Francesca still open today right there in the Wrigley area. I highly recommend going here for brunch or dinner. Now for fast food. You know, Chicago is known for our Chicago hot dogs. Probably the best place to go for a hot dog in Chicago is Gene and Jude's. This is kind of on the outskirts of the city west, not too far from Elmwood Park, Melrose Park, some mobbed up Italian neighbors. But Gene and Jude's, this is place is a gold mine. It's open late. And this is the place that uh, usually there's lines all the way out the window, all the way out the door. Gene and Jude's, one of the best hot dogs in the city. I was here on my birthday and who do i run into um belushi um not yeah jim belushi i always get him confused john and jim i actually definitely called jim belushi his dead brother's name john belushi but jim belushi when i met him here just a regular guy he says he comes here every time he's in town and he was telling me all about his uh marijuana growing business so uh this is a staple in chicago gene and jude's now, in Chicago, you know, we got many great places to go for Italian beef, right? Portillo's, Biona, Patio on Taylor that I mentioned. Scatchel and Cicero is probably the best place for a beef. Johnny's on North and Harlem, not too far from Tony Ricardo's house in Elmwood Park. We got Mr. Beef. This is a staple in Chicago. It's been around for years. I love the family. The owner, Mr. Beef, Joe, who just passed away. You got his son, Chris, and the beautiful daughter, Lauren. Uh, there's all kinds of pictures of famous people here. You've got free parking. There's a parking lot here. Uh, there's a, a little nice little dining area here. And here you got pictures of Man Cow, De Niro, Joe Pesci, Alec Baldwin, Jay Leno. All your actors uh, have been in here. They all stop uh, at Mr. Beef when you're in town. Delicious Italian beef. A lot of characters here. They used to be open late night, but but not too much anymore. But check it out. When you walk in here, you could just feel you're in Chicago. Now, if you're looking for a nice, fresh Italian sub, there's many, many places. You got Conte di Savoia on Taylor Street. You got Diamato's, which we talked about, Bari next door. You got Vinny Subs, which is owned by uh, Joe Switek, Mikey Switek's brother. Uh, but this place here in, in the West Loop, you got JP Craziano. This is one of the best, freshest. Italian subs in the city. It's a gold mine. It's right there in the uh, River West area. So there's a lot of very high-end restaurants and bars. Uh, but this is kind of where all the beautiful people hang out. Not necessarily at JP's, but in the River West area. Great place to hang out. Uh, but definitely for a fresh sub, a nice Italian sub, you want to check out JP's. Now, you know, Chicago, we got lots of pizza, right? I've had pizza my whole life. I'm, I'm sick of it. But if you like a thin uh, crust pizza, you go to Coal Fire, right there in the Grand Avenue neighborhood, my neighborhood, right there on Grand and Ogden. I lived upstairs in the 90s. The rent was only $4.50. Place was a dump, but when I heard $4.50, I said, I'll take it. My girlfriend thought I was nuts. I rented for uh, I rented it from uh, a great man, John Nitty. But Coal Fire, uh, it's a real thin uh, pizza uh, baked in this old-fashioned brick oven. It's kind of like a high-end joint. But one of the best, you also got deep dish pizza. Now you got, obviously, you got Lou Manalat, Lou. You got Lou's. You got, uh, this here is Pizza Uno. One of the best deep dish. I mean, one slice and you're full. 
but you could always eat the pizza later. You also got Father and Son right there in Bridgeport. That's the pizzeria that Frank Calabrese extorted money from his good friend. Frank Calabrese also worked there as a spotter. You got uh, Lou Malinari's, however you say it, uh, Unero, Pizza Unero, uh, Gino's. I mean, the list goes on and on. But, again, for pizza, my two favorites would be Coal Fire right there in the Grand Avenue neighborhood. And then right downtown, you got the uh, Pizza Uno. Tough place to get into. This is uh, right across the street from the new Bally's Casino that they, op that they opened. Now, for breakfast, right, hands down, the best place for breakfast is Lou Mitchell's. This is an old staple in Chicago. You can see here they serve the world's finest coffee. All the breakfasts are served in a skillet. And when you walk in, because there's a little bit of a, a line to get in, they give you a little box of milk duds and a powdered sugar donut. A lot of characters in here. This is real close to the uh, Chicago Loop where all the uh, – the finance district is, so you get a lot of lawyers, a lot of judges, and you never know who you're going to see in Lou Mitchell's. But definitely, if you're looking for a good breakfast and a nice fresh cup of coffee, check out Lou Miss Mitchell's right there in the West Loop. And, you know, now you got all these gourmet burgers all over the place, but we've got a, a couple places in Chicago called Kuma's. And Kuma's is like a real thick gourmet burger you know, where they'll put avocado, egg, onion, whatever you want on it, they'll put on it. But what's interesting about Kuma's, it's a heavy metal theme. So they'll play like Ozzy, Black Sabbath, Megadeth, Metallica, all your old heavy metal bands, which I love. They blast it and show the old videos. Now, the best Kuma is the original, which is on Belmont, which is like on the northwest side of Chicago. But here's one in River West. They also have one in Lincoln Park. But all the Kumas are good. It's pretty much the same theme, same ambiance. But the best one, again, is off of Belmont. But the only thing I don't like about Kumas, it gets pretty crowded and it's so freaking loud. But maybe it's because I'm older now. But uh, one of the best burgers you'll ever have, Kumas. Second best to this, kind of like a high-end place, high-end burger, as we all know, is uh, Cheval. Cheval is a much thinner burger, kind of like uh, yuppies and hipsters hang out there. There's one in the River West area, and then there's one uh, up north in Wicker Park. Uh, but if you like a big, heavy burger with a heavy metal vibe, you definitely want to check out Kuma's. And, yes, Carson Ribs, right? In my opinion, the best ribs in Chicago are from Carson. Chris Carson owned Carson Ribs for many, many years. All the professional athletes and big shots and movie stars used to hang out at the original uh, Carson Ribs, which was uh, off of um, Ontario there, not too far from the old Ditkas. Now that they're all, all closed, they do have one downtown Milwaukee. So if you're going to a Bucks game, you definitely want to go to Carson Ribs. And then east of Michigan Avenue in the Streeterville area is the Carsons. Kind of hard to park, but it's kind of classy in there, a little expensive but delicious uh, ribs, you could also get them to go. But Carson Ribs is uh, was good friends with Mike Ditka, all your Chicago beers, all your Chicago um, uh, professional athletes, and I'm sure he was good friends with some of the wise guys too. Now, my specialty, chicken wings. Hands down, the best place to get chicken wings is Bird's Nest. I don't know if it's the, the wing itself or the sauce, but if this is in Lincoln Park which is not too far from DePaul campus where I went. But some of the best chicken wings in the city, if not the best, obviously you got Harold's, you got a couple other places. But I recommend this place, great place to watch a game, kind of like a sports bar. And there's all kinds of beautiful women that hang out here. Good place to go day drinking and a lot of beautiful waitresses. But check out Bird's Nest if you like chicken wings. Now, you know, in Chicago, we got a lot of high-end restaurants. You got uh, one of my favorites, the Harry Carey's Original Steakhouse, Italian Steakhouse in the River North area. You got uh, Gina Giordetti's, an old mobbed-up Italian steakhouse. You've got uh, RPM, but my favorite, one of the best, you got Chicago Cut. Very expensive, excellent service right off the Chicago River. A lot of uh, uh, professional athletes in big shots hang out here. I've only been here a few times because I can't afford it, but this is one of the best uh, steakhouses in Chicago. Last time I was here, we ran up the bill to a little over $900. Now, 
Now, way up north in the uptown area near the famous Aragon Ballroom, the Aragon Ballroom next to the Riviera is a great place to see, like a smaller rock show. Um, you got the Green Mill. This is like a legendary staple in Chicago, kind of like a speakeasy. This is one of Al Capone's joints back in the day. Nice place to have a cigar and listen to jazz. The area is a little shady. So you got to be, you got to, you know, keep your head up. But uh, Green Mill up north there, old speakeasy, not too far from Aragon. Now, here's a little secret for you right there in an old Italian patch, which is now Pilsen. You got just a one block area where they have all these delicious mon pa restaurants, Italian restaurants. Everything's homemade. Nobody knows about this unless you're a Chicagoan. My go to is Bruno's. What I like about Bruno's is I always find street parking and I never have to wait. Uh, the service is pretty good. The owner, Luigi, who's always in there. Um, and this is Mike Madigan. That's our crooked politician. For those of you who don't know who he is, but he's in here four or five times a week. I've seen him in here many times. I was just recently here. I saw that other politician, Bob Fioretti. He's running for, um, I forget what he's running for. Um, maybe Bob Fioretti is a, a politician. He's always running, but he never lose, He never wins. But just down the street is a, is an active social club as well. They used to have a one-block street festival as well where they would grill Italian sausage. Uh, but this is a great little neighborhood to hang out if you want to get away from some of the uh, – more popular places. You got Bruna's right there near 26th in Oakley, which is one block off of Western. Now, if you're looking for a sports bar, place to watch a game, you don't want to go to Richards because Richards is not a sports bar, but you got Glasscott's. The Glasscott family have been in Lincoln Park for years. They own a lot of the buildings in Lincoln Park. They're a big time realtor and they own probably one of the best Irish bars in Chicago. Great place to watch a game. Uh, great place to go for St. Patrick's Day. But what I like about Glasgow's, it's right there in Lincoln Park on Webster and Halstead. A great neighborhood. A lot of beautiful women in here. And right next door is a really good uh, Greek restaurant called uh, the Athena Room. So you can have a nice Greek meal and then sit down and watch your favorite game. But check out Glasgow's uh, if you're in Chicago and you want to do some serious day drinking. Now, during the day, if you want to go, uh, if you got some time to kill, I highly recommend going to the Dirksen Federal Building. This is where all the major federal trials are. Now, depending on what's on the docket that day, uh, but this is where I went to the Family Secrets trial. This is where I, I seen Gus Alex. This is where I went to the Sam Carlisi trial, Joaquin Felice, Betty Lauren Maltese, Governor Ryan, Governor Blagojevich. Um, all the trials I went to, vast majority of them were in this building. But what's cool, it's open to the public. So anybody can go. All you got to do is show your ID, walk through the metal detector, and behave yourself. But if you're into court trials like I am, this is the court building. You could definitely spend an, an afternoon in here. Now, somewhat of a tourist thing to do, but it's still pretty cool, is you could check out the Bean. Great place to go. Just definitely... Uh, you know, don't keep your head down, keep your head up, keep your head on the swivel. You don't want to get pickpocketed or anything stolen. But for the most part, you're safe. You just don't want to get caught lacking. Unfortunately, uh, our cities, as we all know, have became uh, a little dangerous. But the Bean is still a cool place to hang out during the day. And as you know, in the city, we got a lot of art, a lot of art that people don't even notice. But here, this sculpture has been around for years. Uh, I forget. I think it's a German uh, artist. But it's all headless people here. This is not too far from Soldier Field on the, in the South Loop area. But place like this, place like this, place like this, it doesn't cost anything. It's free. It's free to hang out here. So take advantage of some of the um, all the art that you see in the city. Same with our museums, right? This is one of the largest indoor uh, best aquariums in the country. You got the Shed Aquarium. Uh, once a month, they throw parties here. Uh, once a month, it's free. But it's always usually very crowded and a little expensive. But if you plan it right, you could pick a day here of the month where it doesn't cost anything. And then you got close proximity to other museums just down the street. And then you got the beautiful lakefront. You got a lot of people walking around, jogging, riding bikes. But this is a really nice place to hang out. 
And then not too far from there, you got the beautiful Art Institute on Michigan Avenue. A lot of great memories here. This is one of the finest museums in the country. Uh, I'll never forget, I crashed this party one time. JFK Jr. threw a party here. I went in through the back door in Columbus, actually crashed the party. It was one of the best parties I've ever went to. But check it out, the Art Institute. Uh, we also got uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art, Modern Art, kind of like Andy Warhol type pa paintings. They have the David Bowie here. They also have uh, uh, Black Fridays. Once a month, they have uh, everybody wears black. It's a really good crowd, a lot of beautiful, sophisticated women. But we throw parties in here once a month. But definitely check it out. This is not too far from uh, the John Hancock building. And right there uh, on the Mag Mile, where obviously you could you know, do some serious shopping. State Street, Michigan Avenue, some of the best shopping in the country. You just got to be careful and watch out for some, some of those thugs so you don't get robbed. And then every Saturday night, you got free fireworks that come from Navy Pair. This will start in the spring and summertime. But when you're in Chicago, you know, just don't stay downtown. Check out all the different neighborhoods, right? You got the Gold Coast. You got Lincoln Park, Lakeview, Wrigleyville, Bucktown, Wicker Park, where all your artists and hipsters are. You got Hyde Park. You got Boys Town. You got Chinatown. You got Little Italy. There's so many cool, interesting neighborhoods, all close proximity to one another. You'd easily get there by a bike, cab, Uber, walk, or take the train. Now, a couple things you don't want to do in Chicago. You do not want to go on the south side. Trust me when I say this. This is some of the most, most dangerous, violent neighborhoods in the country, especially at nighttime. I would say don't go any further than 35th Street. 35th is where White Sox Park is. But here is Old Block. This is where King Von and Young Dirk are from. This is one of the largest, most violent housing projects in Chicago, if not the country. Uh, right now, we're top three in murders. The police, the mayor have no control. So definitely want to stay away from the south side of Chicago as well as the near north side of Chicago, right? I would say don't go any west of Western Avenue. Don't go any west of the United Center where the Bulls and Blackhawks play. We call it the wild, wild west. And um, don't take my word for it, but you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of gang activity. Um, very, very dangerous place to be. But if you're into crack, heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, then this is where they sell it. This is where they have heroin highway. There's a main highway that goes in and out of the city of Chicago. It's called 290 or Congress Expressway. So a lot of people come from the suburbs, come east into the city, get off on Cicero, Kedville, Kildare, Costner, they call it Cake Town, get their judge, and then turn around and head out of the city. So it's a very, very lucrative spot for the gangs. I went to the Vice Lord, Vice Lord trial years ago. There was 18 defendants. Uh, these guys made millions of dollars selling cocaine and crack on the west side. But very dangerous neighborhood. You definitely want to stay stay away from the south side and stay away from the west side. And last but not least, don't go on Frank Jr.'s tour. This guy, Chicago Outfit Associate, Coke head, Coke dealer, wore a wire against his own father knowing that that would send his father to prison for the rest of his life, stole his father's money, locked up his brother, his father, and several other Chicago Outfit associates, acquaintances, and friends of his. Now he's doing, trying to look for a movie deal, which he hasn't found since 2007. He's wrote a book. So he's selling his book, and now he's doing tours. Please don't go on his tour. If you want a tour of Chicago or you want a mob tour, hit me up, send me your information, and when you're in Chicago, I'll give you a real mob tour. And my mob tours don't cost anything. They're free. That's right, free. I'm not charging for a mob tour. Something I, something I enjoy. 
most of these places I drive by anyways. And like my good buddy Tonto says, who I haven't seen in a while, if we see this Junior Calabrese mob tour bus going through our neighborhood up and down Grand Avenue, I'm throwing a fucking brick through the window. Just kidding, guys. But that's it. That's my two, three-day itinerary. I can go on and on with great restaurants, bars, places to see. But these are just some of my favorites. But take notice. If you're in Chicago, check it out. Be safe. Don't get caught lacking. Have a great weekend. Ciao.